I started collecting racist objects when I was a teenager, and the stuff was everywhere. At a certain point, I ended up with thousands of pieces. I didn't know what I would do with it. I just thought a lot about what it meant to be a person of color living during Jim Crow. Had no intention of creating a museum, but the collection kept growing. So in the 1990s, I gave my collection to the university. It took 15 years, but in 2012, we opened this museum. I have lots of respect for museums that celebrate African-American history, that celebrate African-American accomplishment, but that's not what this facility was. I wanted to, to create an actual racism facility to have people focused on this specific topic in terms of our history. So if you just have a society with millions of just postcards like this, does that reinforce certain ideas about black people and white people? Some of the best discussions we have in the museum are about the word nigga, which sounds kind of weird, by the way, because I'm a sociologist and we don't believe words have any inherent meaning. They're just sound signs that we give. But we do believe that people, once the meanings are given, that they are shared. I mean, no piece is inherently racist. It's a racist society which will create racist objects and will racialize other objects. That's why the watermelon is, is, has a racial. There's nothing inherent about a watermelon that makes it racist. But you know darn well that it's been racialized. Someone looking at uh, Aunt Mama objects or other mammy images, they don't think of that as offensive. They think of good times spent with their families. It's very nostalgic. Someone else looking at those same pieces, they see the vestiges of slavery and segregation. So often we're not deciding that something is racist, but what we are doing are collecting pieces that help us talk about racism. We have lots of friends of the museum and we receive hundreds of pieces a year. The first director of the museum said to me one day, hey, there's, there's a couple guys I want you to meet. Here we go. Here's some Jim Crow related materials. These are the dolls and some of them are older, some are newer. These are like 1950s. This is Male cute. and female. Yeah, those, those are really interesting. They are. Our group of friends, friends were all collecting this because we realized what it said about our society and what it said about where we were in the past and where maybe we still were. When we met David Pilgrim and the, the whole Jim Crow Museum and all of that, it was like, uh, finally, there's a place where we can put this. A sense work. of relief that we could let go yeah, of these yeah. objects so other people could learn from it. We have some understanding of, of bigotry. We have some understanding of uh, being the outsider or not being accepted or being told that we are not welcomed, we can't be accepted, you, you have no place here. I think because we've experienced that in our own lives, because we're gay, uh, there's a little transference there to trying to help understand the even bigger question of bigotry and then likewise racism. Wow, this is really racist. This is an ashtray where the black washerwoman, she has her one breast stuck in the ringer and so she's hollering. My Whoa. God, that's also sexist. I think the Jim Crow would love this that. This is the Jim Crow. This is on multiple levels. This is a wonderful piece. Once we finally discovered the Jim Crow Museum, uh, it gave us more impetus to go out and find, collect, save. They now have at least 500 things from us. By collecting those things, we get a, a broader picture of how racism continued all the way up into the 60s and 70s and still continues. I've seen things right. about President Obama that were horrible. Uh, I think people who go to the Jim Crow Museum are often surprised when they see something from 2015 as racist as many of the things from 100 years ago. And we've had friends who are a complete mess after they've left because suddenly they've been confronted with the truth. For many years when I traveled, I would say that the United States, despite this history of enslavement and Jim Crow, that we are today more democratic and more egalitarian than we've ever been. And I stopped saying that about two years ago. 
I'm not suggesting that we are back in the Jim Crow period. Don't get it twisted. It's not like that. But what I am saying is I hear and see a level of racist rhetoric that is reminiscent of when I was growing up in Alabama under Governor George Wallace. People say they don't want to talk about race, but they're doing it all the time. But they're not talking about it in places where their ideas can be challenged. 